quick show of hands, how many of you have used a voice assistant before? The voice assistants that we've used are part of over 3 billion voice assistants that are currently in use worldwide, whether that's Apple's Siri, I love what I do, Amazon's Alexa, Okay, I set up your meeting with David tomorrow. Or Microsoft's Cortana. Glad I can help. Now, what do all of these voice assistants have in common? They are all female by default. This design decision of a female voice plays on stereotypes like the female secretary, especially in terms of voice assistants being obedient and in a place of servitude for others. On the other hand, supercomputers are made male. These supercomputers are devices made to perform incredibly intellectual tasks, such as helping doctors with medical diagnoses and playing Jeopardy, as pictured here. These two examples highlight how pervasive gender design is in what is becoming ubiquitous technology. I want to explore this phenomenon further. My name is Gianna So. My name is Gianna So, and today I'll be presenting my research on coding gender, female stereotypes and voice assistants. In order to further examine this relationship between gender and technology, I'll be answering two questions today. The first, how do gender norms shape voice assistants? And the second, how do voice assistants shape gender norms? As we'll see through this presentation, the answers to these questions are inherently linked and reveal a cyclical trend between gender and technology. In answering this first question, we must first start with a core issue, the gender binary and its accompanying stereotypes that we are all taught growing up. Society tells us that men are superior to women, including in terms of intellect. In fact, at just six years old, girls are more likely to describe boys as geniuses rather than themselves. This affects the way people engage with their education, with men being more likely to pursue fields associated with raw intelligence than women. This translates to the workplace, where only 20% of artificial intelligence engineers, as in the people creating this voice assistant technology, are women. We can see this in the team who made Siri, pictured here, a group of three men. Undoubtedly, these three men are brilliant engineers, but this lack of gender diversity in engineering spaces means that the perspectives of people other than men are often left out of the conversation when creating the technology of the future. While this team and Apple have never publicly commented on why Siri is female, Amazon and Microsoft have given insight as to why their voices are female. However, Siri does mean beautif a beautiful woman who leads you to victory in Norwegian, indicating some level of intentional gender design. An Amazon spokesperson has said that Alexa is female because Amazon conducted beta tests with consumers before launching, which showed that female voices tested best. A Microsoft Spokesperson has said that Cortana is female because in terms of their goals of creating a helpful, trustworthy, and supportive assistant, a female voice was a stronger choice. Further research around the roles we ascribe to gendered voices gives us more insight to these design decisions. This research shows that female voices are associated with helping us to solve our problems by ourselves, while male voices are associated with authority figures who tell us the answers to our problems. Because users of voice assistant technology want their technology to, technology to help them, but also want to be the bosses of it, they opt for female voices. This also shows why supercomputers are made male. Consumers also display a preference for new and complex technology such as artificial intelligence and voice assistants to appear reliable. Playing on familiar gender norms accomplishes just that. In this world driven by profit, there is clearly a lot of economic motivation to make products successful by catering to user wants. And in this case, that means adhering to societal ideas about gender. Going back to this first question, there are three main ways gender norms shape voice assistance. The first are the societal ideas of gender norms such as female subordinacy that affect all of us. The second is a lack of gender diversity in the teams creating this technology. The third is the um, goal to make products successful by catering to user wants. Knowing this, we can now move on to the second question. How do voice assistants shape gender norms? The reality is that these voice assistants are digital female personas in our pockets that we can give any command. 
parents across online blogs share concerns about the ideas that their children get from bossing around these voice assistants without the need to say please or thank you. The following are two quotes from those articles. Alexa tolerates poor manners. At the very least, it creates patterns and reinforcement that so long as your diction is good, you can get away, get what you want without niceties. Alexa teaches children about the role of women, girls, and people who are gendered female to respond on demand. As these parents discuss, these dictative interactions with assistive technology have the power to shape young minds and teach them a lack of respect for females, especially those in subordinate positions. This socialization to devalue and disrespect women has been shown to be the basis of sexual harassment and violence in the future. Along these lines, there are actually videos online of people sexually harassing voice assistants, as seen in this clip. What is your favorite sex position? I don't really like talking about myself. In addition to this disturbing video, there has also been more female formal research conducted about the way voice assistants respond to sexual harassment. The findings are shown in these two charts. I'll let you read the findings for yourself because most of it is explicit, but I want you to pay attention to the fact that there are no program responses explicitly asking the user to stop or even telling them that they're being inappropriate. In fact, these voice assistants sometimes respond flirtatiously or even playfully, as seen in these pink boxes. I'll give you a few more moments to read. Now, this treatment towards women is common in real life. Women face this type of harassment as they're being catcalled walking down the street, as they face inappropriate people at parties, or even just in daily social interactions. In fact, it's been shown that 77% of women will be verbally sexually harassed in their lifetime. In real life, women can speak up. In real life, there's an opportunity for women to hold these inappropriate individuals accountable for the way that they're treating others. With voice assistance, however, users face no consequences. Instead, they are enabled by voice assistance's engineered subordinacy and their inability to defend themselves. By creating this voice technology that is based on hurtful gender norms, such as female submissiveness, engineers have created manipulable digital personas that can be freely mistreated. These two stories are manifestations of a gender dynamic that is way too common in real life the blatant disrespect of women, especially in terms of subjecting them to service and sexual harassment. Going back to the second question of how do voice assistants shape gender norms, that is exactly what it does. They enable and encourage this disrespect of women. When coupled with our answers to the first question, Sorry. When coupled with our answers to the first question, it becomes clear that there is this cyclical relationship between gender norms and gender design and voice assistant technology. We start out with these societal ideas about gender, such as female submissiveness, and that shows up in gender design and voice technology, such as voice assistants being female and supercomputers being male. User interactions with this gender design go back to reinforce the very same ideas that these designs were based on. I believe that the negative aspects of this relationship must be addressed, whether through creating a more gender neutral voice for voice assistants or allowing users to choose the gender of their voice assistants in the first place. Moving forward, we must work to make sure that new progressive technology is not based on outdated and invalid stereotypes. Tackling our own gender biases in voice technology can be a small start. Thank you.